I'm going to start with the timeline because at the beginning of your unit, which you've selected for the example that we are using, we've picked patients. And at the beginning of that, it mentions the timeline and the characters you put on that. Also, all the way through the activities, you're going to come across different characters that you need to put onto your timeline. So I'm just going to cover the timeline comprehensively now, and then we will go into the actual activity-based aspect of Konos Living. So this isn't really how the timeline generally looks. This is me taking all our little bits off the wall, passage wall that was there for years and years and years, and putting them into some format for the sake of being able to show you on this workshop. But ordinarily, you would have all your sentry lines spread right across your passage wall. And if you are a family that's on the move and you don't want to be having to stick up and down, take them on and off the walls, you can actually create something like this, which some families have done. I'll show you quite simply. Look, it's just strips of cardboard. I've joined them there with some tape. And you can just keep making it concertina file. As you can see, this just folds up like that and off to go. Okay? So you can do it like that or you can put it on the wall. The BC, for the sake of illustrating how the timeline works, just remember BC's got the yellow arrow, which continues through to here, and then AD's the green arrow. Okay, so now you are going to um, see in your activities that you're going to be reading a scripture and learning a little bit about, for example, Boaz. And so now your children have to find him. So don't, it's not mom preparing, remember, your children are involved. This is integrated learning, integrated age or so. You say to one of your older children, perhaps, here's the timeline pack. Select one of the pages and look through them all and see if you can find Boaz. And they're going to have to look through all of these. Now they're becoming familiar and they're going to remember what they see here. So next time they come to get a character trait, they're going to be able to find it quicker. So now they're going to search for Boaz, find him and cut him out and put him onto the timeline in the relevant place. They might not understand where or how, and so you're going to show them. And you're going to say, okay, let's see, what year was he? He was BC 1120. So now then you show them how to place him on the timeline over there. Okay? Or there's, an, there's a couple of other examples here, Charles Baggage, Babbage, uh, David. So now they've cut out the, the character, and they've put it on here. Now let me show you what starts happening. Here you have BC, and in 1500, you've got Moses and Aaron. And then in the 1100, you've got Samuel and Ruth. And then in 900 BC, you've got Solomon and Absalom. Okay, So now straight away, you see there's hundreds of years that have passed between these different Bible characters. So the children really start getting an understanding. When you speak to them about David and Goliath, they know that in history, it was 300 years after Moses and the stories of Moses. Okay, so you can see for yourself now just by this very quick short illustration of, of how quickly the an, an understanding starts to becoming a bigger, clearer picture um, of Bible times and Bible characters as well as AD. So if we move, move across to AD, I'm not going to go into all the examples because this will just happen naturally for you. Children start seeing blocks of history. They start seeing age of exploration. They start seeing uh, an era that was full with lots of new authors coming out. Um, C.S. Lewis, um, Ogden Nash, the, the um, poet, and so on. And there, there, there's an A.A. Milne, and when they were in history, where they related to one another, how close together were those authors and how spread apart, whether there's 100 years before between them or, or 10 years. And so it goes on. And then you get the age of exploration, the age of discovery. I mean, we know now that we're in the age of technology. <laughs> and so that'll be a whole block. I mean, it's a big focus on the age of te technology at this time. So your children are growing up in the age of technology now, while this has been produced in 2014. So they'll be able to look back in history from BC to AD and see what happened throughout history, and how there is a relevance between when, um, in medicine, for example, early discoveries in medicine, new breakthroughs in medicine, how many hundreds of years that ago that was, and how each different player or person or character that you put in, how it influenced the next one along. And so that brings us then to telling our children that what you're doing today might not seem relevant, but what kind of impact could it be happening later on for God and for the work he wants done and for his kingdom. So this starts to really have an impact on the children's understanding. Sadly, because it's an option thing, 
to buy the timeline, do you get it or don't you get it? A lot of people just don't. They see it's an expense that they could perhaps not have. And then, as you can see clearly, there's going to be a lot of value missed from not having this particular resource. Okay, I'd like to just go into a little bit more depth as well about the actual characters and how they've been illustrated and why. Right. Here we have David. So who's David? He was a shepherd boy. See, some little sheep. He is one of the bloodline of Jesus. Anybody in the bloodline of Jesus will have a little cross on their on the illustration with that character. The sling and the stones. Okay, he started as a shepherd boy. He has a crown to indicate that he became king. Right, there's David for you. Let me show you another one. So he has Christian Barnard for us South Africans and for anybody else <laughs> out there. Um, in Konos, you can go to cooperation, one of the character traits, and there's a big section on the human body because um, it's illustrating how all our internal organs cooperate with one another. Um, our heart isn't arguing with our lungs to say, well, I don't feel like beating anymore. And our lungs aren't going, well, I'm not going to breathe if you're not going to beat. It doesn't happen like that. So the, the example of how God has so, made us so uniquely and beautifully and created us so amazingly um, looking internally is how perhaps we could behave externally as in cooperating with one another. And so while we're busy studying the heart and the chambers of the heart, we're not going to now have to have our children memorize the different chambers and, and draw the diagram of the heart and remember it all. It's more about understanding the heart of God. It's more about understanding why he wants us to be um, cooperative, and cooperating people and how he wants us to our characters to grow and strengthen in cooperation. And while we're doing that, we go and we put Christian Barnard on the timeline in 1922, was when he was born. And now when the children look at the timeline, they don't have to remember who's this guy, Christian Barnard. Now, who was he? I can't remember. They see the heart in his hand, and they know that he, was, he did heart surgery, the first um, heart transplant operation. And so now there's a, you can see, by the way, it's illustrated that it gives prompts. There isn't a cross indicating that he's not the, necessarily the bloodline of Jesus, although aren't we all? But you know that you can understand why they have those particular, it's for the actual biblical reference and so on. Okay, so now I'll give you another example. Jane Goodall, another South African example. So now I'll stop here. Because people say, oh, but I'm worried because Konos is American-based. Yes, American mothers wrote it, but they didn't write it thinking of America. They wrote about it thinking about training children's character, having our focus on developing and molding character, not so much about the knowledge. So there's plenty in Konos that covers, that is global. You don't have to think of it as South African or American or is it this or is it that. There's a whole section on, on Africa in the Konos volumes. Actually, one of the topics is Africa. So in that topic, there is Jane Goodall to put onto the timeline. Instantly, there's a, a reference of who Jane Goodall is and what, what she is about um, because of the illustration again. And here we've got Henry Ford. A little prompt there for the children. Who was Henry Ford? I can't remember who he was and what he's about. Well, there's the card to illustrate to remind us um, of his brainchild when it is invention and his development of the motor vehicle. Okay, I think this is uh, pretty much illustrated um, why these timeline characters are more than just you know, putting character traits, characters up onto the timeline. There's just so much more to it. I hope that's been enough to inspire you to actually use your timeline, or if you don't have one, to, to perhaps acquire one, because it is very, very valuable.